Hey guys, um, today at Leila Teachers we'll be doing the extra pyramidal system and our mnemonic goes vanity often requires real talent which is true so vanity often requires real talent now we'll start with the tracks so if you have a V we've got an O, we've got an R, we've got another R, and we've got a T. Our T is quite small, but anyway, so our V stands for vestibular spinal because the extra pyramidal system is motor. We have to go from the brain to the spinal cord, then we have the olivospinal tract. The names tell you where they come from. You've got the rubro spinal tract which is from the red nucleus this is from the vestibular nuclei and the cerebellum the olivospinal is from the inferior olivary nucleus you have the reticular spinal tract from the reticular formation and for t you have the tecto spinal tract which comes from the tectum tecto spinal tract yes all right so um not much is known about the olivospinal, so it is unknown. We're going to cross this one out. You need to know the name, though. Then we move on to the tectospinal. Now, the tectospinal is um, not much noted in humans. It's mostly in animals, but its function is for posture reflexes of vision. Vision. And so we're going to cross this out too because it's mostly in animals. Our con we're going to concentrate on the vestibular spinal, rubro and the reticular spinal. Now, vestibular and rubro do not like each other much. They do the opposite of each other. So the of opposite functions. So if you know the function of vestibular spinal, you know exactly what the rubro spinal will do. The vestibular initiates the extensors extensor muscles and inhibits inhibits the flexors or the flexor muscles so now you know what the rubrospinal does right it's the opposite so it initiates the flexors and inhibits the extensors Right. Then we move on to the reticulate spinal, which facilitates uh, voluntary reflexes. Pretty simple. Facilitates voluntary reflexes. All right. Okay. Now we'll talk a bit about the vestibular spinal. So there are two tracks. You've got the lateral vestibular spinal and you've got the uh, medial vestibular spinal now the medial one doesn't go much uh, below it just stops at level t6 it's a short one and the lateral goes throughout all levels of the spinal cord and it um in this uh, two tracks you have the medial fasc uh, longitudinal fasciculus um, so the lateral one is for postural changes so it excites anti-gravity muscles anti-gravity muscles and the medial one is for uh, the neck muscles is for the head movements like head and eye coordination and um, those are the tracks with extra pyramidal system now the thing about the system is that um, it's a multi-neuronal and multi-synaptic pathway so it has several relay stations which if you know is very very good for you so um, let's go to the relay stations. So the relay stations are in the brain. They're not below the level of the brain. They're in, not in the spinal cord. They're in the brain, but um, they move around. So it's multineuronal and multisynaptic pathway, and they have to exit the or finish or terminate in the motor cortex. And from the motor cortex, these tracks will take it to the different muscles, extensors, flexors, or voluntary flexors, whatever. So they are in the uh, body. So the first one would be the basal ganglia. Now they follow um, 
a pathway, you could say. So the basal ganglia within it. So it first starts from the striatum. Then it goes to the medial pallidum. Then it goes to the ventral anterior nucleus of the thalamus and it ends in the motor cortex. Then second, we've got the substantia nigra, which is in the midbrain. This is the diencephalon. So it starts again from the striatum. Then it goes to the substantia nigra. Then to the same ventral anterior nucleus of the thalamus. And finally terminates in the motor cortex. The third one would be the um, subthalamic nucleus, which is in the diencephalon again. So this one starts from the lateral pallidum, goes down to the subthalamic nucleus, onto the medial pallidum, and to the ventral anterior nucleus of the thalamus, which then goes to the motor cortex. Then the last one we have from the cerebellum. So here it starts from the pontine nucleus, and the pontine nucleus is obviously in the pons, then you have the contralateral cerebrocerebellum, which goes on to the dentate nucleus of the cerebellum. And this can either go to the red nucleus or the thalamus, but not the ventral anterior, but the ventral lateral. So thalamus, ventral lateral, or the red nucleus, whatever you want. <laughs> or you can write both, which is even better. And finally, they all end in the motor cortex. That is the extra pyramidal system for you. I hope it was easy. Uh, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Take care, guys.